this. Um, Michael Tan, well, just to start off, the transition team has been setting up these virtual um, info sessions on different programs. Um, and today we are going to look over single step. Um, Michael Tan has been the director there for a while, uh, ever since I can remember. <laughs> um, and uh, But it's a really great program. I've sent kids there over the years. Um, I can't say enough. I'm not going to describe it too much because that's what Michael's going to do. Um, but I, yeah, I'm glad you all were able to come and Michael's going to get started. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Now with the, ch with the chat, it doesn't look like I can share the PowerPoint in it, but I've, I've sent it, to, I've sent it to the two of you so you have it. Um, okay. So let's, so let's get started. Hi, my name is Michael Tan. Welcome. I am the director of the Center for Alternative. I'm hearing some odd. Okay. Oh, never mind. Okay. So I am the director of the Center for Alternative and Supported Education at the Community College of Baltimore County, um, otherwise known as CASE. And in particular, I'm here to talk to you today about the Single Step Program. This program has been around almost 50 years. Actually, our 50th anniversary will be 2024. Um, and this, the program is specifically designed for young adults, for, for adults with developmental and intellectual disabilities and learning differences. So within, within our program, we are designed for, um, hello, why did that go there? It should be there. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So, we are designed for, for students who may want to find training for a job. They may want to work on the reading, math, and others and writing and writing skills. Um, it, sometimes it's it, we are a, um, a link to credit studies. So some a student may not be ready for credit studies. But um, but but may may want just a little bit of time to on a college campus to trend to be able to transition to that environment. Uh, so we have we have had some students that have done that as well because sometimes it may take a semester or two to get comfortable with 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 that uh, with the environment with the new environment. But the idea being that we have been a springboard to students who are get, who going to get associates or. Um, associates or bachelor's degrees and then we're sort of the linking step they might just need a little bit more um more work on like you said their their reading their reading skills their writing skills their math to get there and we can we can help them do it um this, so you may not be ready for credit classes or credit classes may not be your thing and an associate's degree is degree isn't where you're going so uh, the ability to come to a college campus, have a, have a college experience, because we, we are with the School of Continuing Education, and our, and our students are CCBC students that can make few, full use of the, of, of the gym, the cafeteria, the library, all of the amenities on, on our campuses. Um, but, and we also have some students that have moved on, and for example, I can think of two who are taking upper, upper level math classes with the credit students, and they are um, taking other classes with us. And I'll talk a little bit more about the types of classes that we offer in a second. But the idea being that we're, we're a very flexible program that really is unique. Montgomery College has something similar for our academic studies and elective classes. Um, Howard Community College has um, has a program that starts at from three to five that offers some of the life skills classes that we do but within the state we really are unique um the other so the other the other piece of what we do is that um we also have a host of career training programs and i'll talk in more particularly about those but that means that within one or two semesters you could be trained for example to step into a daycare or childcare setting, or to work with animals in a PetSmart or in a, um, in, a, in, a, in a kennel or an animal daycare situation, for example, or a warehouse. So our general, our academic studies are, um, actually I'm 
wondering if there's no way now. Okay, so I'm just wondering if there's a way to, that I can post this somehow on just my screen, but it's not going to happen. Um, so, so again, uh, you'll get you'll get all of this information. Um, and if, if you have questions while I'm talking, please ask them now, because Michael, were, since were you, Michael, were you going to share the PowerPoint? I have. Well, I'm, I'm saying like I can't see it right now. Okay. Yeah. I. Uh, okay. I can't. If I if I share my screen and share the PowerPoint, um, the interpreter and her client aren't going to be able to see each other. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So All yeah, right. that's why we're that's why we're sort of winging it this way. Okay. Um, and, and unfortunately, I've never I've never had to fi figure. There's got to be there's got to be a better better user friendly way to do this. I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, so, but it but the, because it's important that the that um, that the student is able to. to to, to see what Bethany has to say and Bethany can translate for us um, within all of this. So again, I'm going to talk, so all I'm talking, if you have questions, bring them up now. You can either post in the chat. In fact, Mike, if you could, actually, I can, I can put, keep the chat up too. Um, but uh, please, okay, yeah, I've, I've emailed the PowerPoint already to you, Mike, and to uh, Jennifer. So you should have it sitting in your inboxes. Um, okay, so our general and ac our academic studies and general studies classes, we offer um, reading comprehension and writing classes under our English, and we can accommodate readers at any level. I have four levels of reading comprehension classes that that are the basically. I so we can take we can take readers at any place and 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 work with them. Writing, we have three levels of writing as well. We have three levels of math. I can work with, we can work with students who are still working on their whole number operations or addition, subtraction, multiplication, and, um, and division um, it, up through pre-algebra and algebra. So one of the things that I want, one of the things that I want you to take away from the the, this session and this program is the fact that our program is designed to take learners at any level. We do not turn somebody away because they're not reading or doing math at a certain level. That, that's, that's the important thing I want you to get out of that. And that we have, that we can accommodate and put your learner in the classroom with people who are, who are within one or two grade levels of wherever they are reading or, or doing math. We also offer humanity. Mike, yes. Mike, Ms. Moore has a question. She has her hand up. Oh, OK. Sure. Go ahead. So if the student has already received the, um, her acceptance letter um, for the program at CCBC, is there anything more she has to fill out Okay, uh, are you talking about with single step or with credit studies? See, I'm okay. not for sure. Um, she goes to Dundalk High School. I mean, she okay. already received the, um, the acceptance letter to go to attend CCBC, but I keep getting these emails and for the seminars here, but I'm not for sure as to what else she needs to do. Okay, well, th that's why I'm asking the question. Are, did you enroll in the single step program? Do you know, or what, or did she get an assessment letter? Did she come in and take you the AccuPlacer test and enroll in no. credit classes? No, she did I not. I don't know okay. if she did it in school or not. I, I, I'm not for sure. Okay, um, does the name Jennifer Cabana ring a bell? No. Okay. Then you put you're probably it's probably not our program and I can't you're gonna have to go back and look and see or if you can find that assessment letter and see who the contact person is. I'm it's because I don't our college is huge. And so I don't know if she was looking at, at credit studies at one of the continuing education programs. This is specifically single step, the single step program, um, in which case she would if, to get an assessment from us, she would have um, either on Zoom or come into our offices and spend two hours with Melissa Foy, our intake so specialist. So this, 
this is not part of the files program? No, this is not files. No, okay, files. If, oh, okay. Okay. If 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 the students in falls, they're still in high school. Um, once they leave falls, then they would single step would be a, a program for them. But my understanding is the falls program is 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 extended up to age twenty one, and, and so yeah. So you, know, you that would be the that would be the falls um, people with um, Baltimore County Public Schools. Miss Moore, you have been working with Mr. Collins, correct, Greg Collins? I guess I don't know. I can um, let ask him to reach out to you specifically about your questions and the FALS program. Okay, okay. I'm not. I'm not for sure as to what's going on. Well, it sounds like maybe she's going to PS FALS at Dundalk. She will, she'll, your, your, your child will remain with Baltimore County Public Schools, but next year her classes will be on the campus of CCBC Dundalk. Is that, does that sound familiar? I think so. Okay. All right. So this would be another program that could be available to her after she actually leaves Baltimore County Public Schools. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Thank you. Y'all have a good evening. Okay, so actually, you know what? I'm going to try something. Um, Ms. Just... Willis also has a question. Sure, go know. ahead. Well, um, I just want to say that um, when the lady was asking about uh, going to, to the college, you know, with uh, his kid is in uh, falls program, what happened is I, I have some information for the CCBC in Catonsville. Uh, I'm trying to see what kind of classes they have and how it works. And they told me that first uh, they had to do the assessment. After they finish the program, either the college program or the false program. And then when they uh, have the assessment, they decide if they can take the credit classes or just uh, regular classes. That's what they told me. Um, so when they finish the program in high school, which is a 21, and they have a certificate, that's what they're using to be able to enroll in these uh, programs that they have CCBC or Howard County and things like that. I just want to share that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In which in which case, part of that is what the, what you're. I think what you're talking about too is is um, CCBC and credit studies. Again, we're part of continuing education, Completely. so our students are not getting associate's degrees. The, we're, in, we're in the other we're in the other half of the college um and but as look okay so i'm what i'm doing is i'm copying and pasting pieces of of the information off of my powerpoint and i'm putting it into the chat mm -hmm. so that you so that you can hold, at least follow along with the text it's not going to look as pretty but um but let me see if this May, let's understand what's not doing this. Okay. Um, okay. So to uh, enjoy this kind of programs, the kids needs to be very functional or. Okay. So we have, again, we have learners at all different levels. levels. Okay. I don't uh -huh. know exactly what you're talking about with functional. We have, we have students who are not verbal. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have students who use handheld devices to communicate. Okay. We have, we have students in wheelchairs. We have students in walkers mm -hmm. with, with limited mobility. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, again, this, this program was specifically designed with, with your, with your students in, in yeah, mind. I understand. It's, yeah. They, yeah. Um, because even our upper level classes, we may be teaching the same material as the mm -hmm. other parts of the college are, but we're teaching it differently and we're doing it at a different pace. Okay. And um, do they have like a adult assistance, you know, um, just in case the kid needs help, uh, especially if they have in a wheelchair or whatever? Okay. Um, but unlike high school, um, the answer to that is no. If, no. if if the student it has mobility issues, then the student's going to need a one-on-one. -on -one. 
okay. or, or or assistant to 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 come with them. Or so the parents, the parents can together. provide that. Okay. Yeah, that the college does not provide that. Uh, that that it's sort of those sort of accommodations. I mean, it's understandable, but you know, I just want to make sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, that that's actually that is that is a great question. Yes. Um, because for example, things like note takers, um, possibly, but typically the the college um for all, it's all other classes within the disability support services, the note takers are um other students in the class. Mm-hmm. They pay yeah. in, order, in order to do that but it's yeah it's I, I almost feel like i with these conversations i need to preface this with a conversation about you're in right now in the world of the idea where so much in, is provided to you once you leave high school you're in the world of the ada which means you have to request what you need yeah certain okay. accommodations are given so have, yes yeah I, uh... now, but the other thing too is if 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 you're working, for example, with DDA, um, whether it's self-directed services or um, or other DDA funding, um, there are ways that you know, DDA can assist in, for example, the one-on-one, -on -one helping you pay for have, helping you pay for that assistant or one-on-one. -on -one. And that's the other workshop is going to be on on January the 18th that is going to teach how to apply for the DDA, right? Is yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I, then, then that's great. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, um, so yeah. My my daughter is still one one year and a half to go to finish high school, and I just want to educate myself and you know be prepared and look the options. She's functional, but she is like thirty five percent verbal, and she uses okay. everything. You know, sign language, uh, pictures. I mean, everything because that's what we encourage her to be able to communicate, and. Uh, you know, it's a little bit scary to send her to another level. <laughs> oh, uh, I, 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 yeah. I, I totally understand. And <laughs> you're smart. You're doing, you're doing this at the right time. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you. And, and and you're asking and you're asking the asking the right questions. Thank you. Um, because so many times we work with with parents that are that really for whatever reason didn't have the information or were behind mm -hmm. the loop and having to catch up and it's hard. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hey, can, I, can I just interrupt for a minute? I have, um, <clears throat> it appears that that link worked for some people and uh, they are at, they're asking me for permission. So I had to have to grant permission. So bear with me. I'm going through my emails and I'm granting you all permission to <laughs> view the PowerPoint. Michael, if you could just <laughs> update everyone and tell them what slide we're on, um, that would be helpful. Sure. Okay. So I am finishing up slide number three and moving on to four. I've also got the information in the, I've posted the, the information, I'm posting the information as we go in the chat box. So if you can, you scroll through the chat, at least you can see um, our, the basic classes, the English, the reading, mm -hmm. writing, the math, and then we have humanities courses, um, or what we call our, our what our electives. So a lot of these are life skills, and a lot of these are just plain fun, because um, you need a little bit of both when you're when you're learning during the day. Mm -hmm. And so these classes we have, um, for example, theater, working on theater skills, um, but theater skills designed to improve communication and, and self advocacy. So whether it's so they're doing script writing personal script writing, they're looking at um, and, and pulling apart the elements of a theatrical production and learning about that. But they're also learning improv skills to help them be able to handle new situations and to be able to communicate what they need to communicate. Um, it's just in a, in, a, in a more fun way than just a self-advocacy class. Um, history, music, and art, we've got, we've got classes that are a combination of those and individually uh, individuals. Well, in fact, there's a, a brand new class that I'm going to be offering in the fall called, called Exploring Artists with Disabilities. I've rolled this out in another program. The whole semester is basically going to be about learning about um, people in the arts who have disabilities. Oh, nice. How they create art with their disabilities or in spite of them. Um, so we and that includes learning in developmental disabilities as well as physical disabilities. And did you say that that is in the spring? Well, um, we'll have that. I should have that in the fall. On the fall. Oh, 
I have elf. Oh, yeah, we'll have it's that. A long actually. way to go. <laughs> there, yeah, there, there's a yeah, there's a there's a there's a brand new class that you'll uh -huh. see under life skills, health healthy relationships. Actually, I should see healthy relationships and social skills. So yeah. this is gonna this is gonna cover everything from conversation skills to basic dating. Ah, nice. Because <laughs> our students are you know, part of it, and this was actually it, one of our teachers came up with this. I came up with the idea for this class saying, I'm seeing all of this stuff going on in class. And I know that people are calling each other boyfriends or girlfriends, and no. et cetera. <laughs> and, and so, but let's also talk about healthy ways to communicate yeah. and healthy ways to interact, as well as there are certain topics that you talk about with certain people. So there's any difference between the uh, community college and on um, Baltimore and the Howard community college? The well, way they do things. Well, uh, right now Howard doesn't offer this this type of program. Okay. It, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah, because our program you'll see you'll see in a little bit of uh -huh. you in a little bit is basically it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Friday from nine fifteen to four fifteen. Um, at, at least the potential. You don't have to take that many classes. Some people take one or two classes during the day. Okay. But we can you can fill up an entire day. For basically from 9 to 9.15 to 4.15. And then we do offer um, remote classes on Zoom on Tuesdays and Thursdays oh, from nice. 9 o'clock until 1. Nice. We've, so we have so we have that at the end. Um, we've, we, we rolled with COVID and the flexibility of it. And it was surprising how well our students and instructors were able to move to an online environment, which is why we're, we're keeping the classes that I'm, I'm showing you most, at least the English and the math classes and some of the humanities are available on the Dundalk campus, mm -hmm. Catonsville campus, and also remotely on Zoom at this, at this, at basically at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that's slide number three. Slide number four, um, which you see in the, in the chat as um, the life skills, personal finance. Mm -hmm. We actually, we've got a class on just basic money management. We have a class on um, money and technology, which goes into money apps, for example, and, and you know, paying, but also and what you can do just with a, a simple smartphone or on a computer. Um, I see Shanti Harrigan has raised her hand. If you want to go ahead and open or uh, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, good evening. Thank you uh, for the presentation. Uh, I wanted to find out, were there any classes in the Hunt Valley uh, campus? Right now, we, um, our classes, our, our largest, cl our largest group of classes are at Dundalk, um, because that's where the program started. Um, and then in Catonsville on the west side, we occasionally have a, a cooking or maybe another class up in Owings Wheels. We have not to date Put programming up in Hunt Valley. We hadn't had as big a need, or or with with that. But that's definitely something that I can look at because part of it is that I need at least four students in a class to run the class. Um, and so um, and so we've as well as having to pull in a lot more instructors. But that's but that's my problem, not yours. If I have enough students in the Hunt Valley area, that I would consider at least putting some of the, the programming in the Hunt Valley area. Um, Cause I, I wish we, I really, we really need something North as opposed to, to the Southeast and the, and the Southwest. Um, we do have some programming that, that does happen in Essex, but, but right now, no, we don't have anything. We don't have any, anything in Hunt Valley, but I'm going to put that on my list. Um, Thank you. <laughs> just, just to quickly, I'm, I'm posting the link to see the, the, slideshow of the PowerPoint. I'm posting it again in the chat. People have been able to access it and I've been granting them access. Um, if that does not work for you, if you want to email me at this email address right here and I can e just email you the PowerPoint, either one works just fine. Okay, cool. And again, thank you for your patience, everybody. Um, so, okay, so I'm now on slide five. And um, the, well, the other thing with the, with the life skills and the, the, and the electives classes, I'm creating new ones all the time. Um, so, there, so those are all, those are going to change up. And, and, and in the past, um, from time to time, we will poll students as well and ask that and put ideas out there and get their input as to what types of classes that they want. 
Um, okay, so the career training track. So that's the academic studies. And I'll, I'll go into the, the, the schedules, the, the sample schedules, what that looks like during the day is coming up later in the, the presentation. But um, on slide five, you'll see our career training programs. And these are unique within the state of Maryland. In fact, prob we're probably a, only we're a handful of colleges in the United States that offer this type of programming. So for example, um, you'll see in the chat, the child care in infants and toddlers. If the student is reading at a sixth grade level and is suitable, um, there, there's, there are, they'll take two semesters of classes and two, concluding two semesters of internship that will prepare them to become a lead teacher in a daycare center um, or yeah, or a, or a child or a child care center. If, they, if this qualifies for the 90 hour certification, so they're getting basically, they're 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 coming out with the same certification that any neurotypical adult coming into the college is getting, at the uh, is going through to become a uh, to become a child care worker. Um, it, again, it's we the, we take two semesters rather than one. And it's taught much different. Actually, all of our classes, this is important. We do activity and experientially based learning. Um, you are not sitting in a classroom being lectured at and taking notes all day. It's not a hard students learn. I actually, now that I've, now that I've learned other ways to, to teach and to learn, I don't want to learn that way anymore. Um, so yeah, so, so the, again, the, our teaching methods are also aligned with the needs of our students, which does make us unique. Um, and um, then if the, if the student um, is not reading at a sixth grade level, but wants to work with young children, um, if, and are reading at a fourth grade level, we have our child care assistant program. So basically you're getting the first semester of the child care program so that you could step in to assist a lead teacher in a daycare center. Or a class, or a, in, a, in a classroom, um, our professional animal workers. This is unique. Um, the idea is to be able to get a job, an entry level job in, for example, an animal daycare or a kennel, some or even a, like a PetSmart, a store, a retail store that also um, has animals, because you're getting you're getting animal studies training plus you're getting um, office skills training. So along with learning about basic animal diet, recognizing the distress signs of an animal and how to calm them down, how to properly hold an animal so that a vet tech or veterinarian could, um, could examine the, the animal, um, the, as well as the feeding, care, and cleanup, and all the rest of it. Um, that's one part of the program. The other part, they're getting classes, classwork in clerical skills in office applications, which includes both um, the Google applications and Microsoft Office, um, as well as customer service skills, answering a telephone, scheduling an appointment, working with greeting a customer. So the idea is to meld those two pieces together. In fact, the um, you'll see office skills is also there. So the the office skills, there are the the professional animal workers are getting almost this, all the same classes and take them with office skills students. And then they, and then in the afternoon, the office skills go and do keyboarding and another um, office applications class. And the, the professional animal workers students go off and do their animal studies classes. Um, warehouse technician, be able to get an entry level job in a warehouse. And, it, and if the student is suitable, that can include um, uh, learning how to operate a forklift and getting certified in, on at least one type of on at least one type of forklift. So I'm on um, six on this, the, the next set of, of slides, six through 12, are just some more, some more detailed information about the types of classes that the career training programs offer. Example, childcare, you're getting the early childhood growth and development, early childhood methods and materials, skills and concepts for employment, which is basically a job readiness class. And then there's a special nine hour class that the state requires on communication, communications interpersonal skills. And in particular, that's being able to communicate like with the families of the children, et cetera. And that's that and these are these are all classes required by the state, as well as the two semesters of internship 
like I said, the, the child care gets the first, that first semester of, of child care and then, um, and then they exit out of the program and can, and can apply for jobs as, um, as an assistant within a, a, within a daycare classroom, a child care setting. Um, I will tell you that our child care program is, has been extremely successful. Not only are we graduating people with the certification, but the local child cares are hiring them. In fact, we have some child care call child or daycare centers that will call us and ask if we have any recent grads, as well as some of our some of our graduates have got jobs at their internship sites. Because as we know, daycares are hurting for employees right now. Um, but yeah, like I said, the professional animal workers, you're getting animal studies classes, clerical work. Um, uh, the micro the, the applications class for um, and we've added it used to be just Microsoft so it'd be Word Excel and PowerPoint and we now balance that with the Google equivalents of those since a lot of businesses have gone to Google since it's free um, uh, Ms Willis if you'd like to ask a question go right ahead. Okay, I, I think you may need to unmute unless your question you no longer have a question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was on mute. That's okay. That's uh, okay. Um, yeah, it's about the uh, professional animal um, work. I want to know how um, where Go is me. the setup? Go where me. are the classes? So things. Go. Wait, Monica. I approve. Okay, the, the, the classes are at Dundalk. Dundalk. All, of our, all of our career training programs right now are only at Dundalk. And part of that is just, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a numbers game. We typically don't get enough students to be able to run the classes and others. So they, so they are done at Dundalk. Now, as, far as, the, as far as these career training programs, um, one thing that you should know is that doors counselors should know of the local doors counselors in the Baltimore County and Howard County offices, actually even Hartford County and PG, um, know about our program in Anne Arundel as well. Um, so, uh, and we have a really good success rate at having the, these, these, these career training programs paid for by doors, which include, uh. we actually, we have, the ability to provide van transportation at a cost mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from basically from door to door so it picks up picks students up in the morning at their houses mm -hmm. and then tape drops them off at campus and then at the end of the day picks them up from the campus and drops them off at the house now it's oh, wow. it's not it's not cheap but but with the clear training programs doors will pay for the, <laughs> actually say i can't commit to it but i can tell you that typically has paid for the van transportation as well as all of the classes. Okay. If your if your student does not have a a, a case with doors, um, reach out to your transition facilitator. Transition facilitator. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I would you recommend mean, uh, you getting that in order. I mean, you know, proceeding. You know, uh, single step. Okay. Thank you. And Ashley, you mentioned something about art. Do they have art classes? Uh, yeah, we we have a we have um, one in particular popular class. Is, it's called sustainable art. It's in the afternoon, uh -huh. um, and this it, uh, actually it's taught by a local artist who oh. actually regularly gets grants to do public art projects. Nice. Um, and you probably have, in certain parts of Baltimore, you may actually have seen her art on walls. Um, it, 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 she works a lot with glass and with mosaics, but mm -hmm. other things as well. But um, the point that the, the idea of this class is is we're, re, we're recycling or upcycling oh, already okay. used goods and creating art of, out of them. So nice. they have they have decorated and painted um, artistically painted furniture pieces. Uh -huh. um, she actually used old LP record albums and used that as the use that as the as the base and then they, they did paintings or other artwork using them um during covid she was using they were using anything in the house that they could mm -hmm. come up with um in order to make art out of but but like i said it, it, this is it's it's it and this is indicative of a lot of our class classes mm -hmm. 
theater class is taught by somebody who regularly works, do, does music direction and works with, if you're familiar with Sky's the Limit Theater in Dundalk. Yes, I'm familiar. Specifically for, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's through the public um, um, parks and recreation, but in particular, okay. it's, it's specialized for, um, the, um, for people with disabilities, mm -hmm. but she teaches our theater classes and our music classes. That's beautiful. So, yes. where, wherever possible, we bring in experts. And it's been, in particular, when it comes to the arts and music and theater, I insist that our that our teachers are actually doing that work. Nice. Not that they're not that they're just picking it up. Um, and okay, so uh, Mike, um, Mrs. Seely has a question. Sure. Too. When did the program begins? I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, when did the program begin? The program begins. Okay, so the program. Okay, so um, we accept our our programming right now runs during the same semesters as the college, so it's fall and spring. Uh, and depending on what you're doing, you can you can you can apply and, and enter either in the fall or in the spring. Now, the, the, the one caveat to that is, if, for example, if, they, if your student wants childcare, uh, they have to start in the fall because it's a two semester program. But all the others are one semester. And so, um, cause we've, so we have had people um, who start, you know, will we'll start with us at the end of August. Um, and we've had people who will, we have people, we have got a whole new group of, of students who are start, who just went through our orientation and will be starting at the end of January. On January 26th with us. Okay, uh, sick question. Uh, do you have animation? Um, actually, yes, we do have a, a we have a video animation, and a, uh, we've got a video game um, design and a video game animation class. Mm, that, thank you. Okay, yeah, actually, that's a, that's those are really popular classes. Those are afternoon classes after the after the English and math. These are um, these are these are great questions. Um, so I don't want to spend too much more time on it because you've got the PowerPoint, but uh, but just on slide 10, you'll see veterinary assistant. This is something we just started about three years ago. If you successfully complete the pause program and are reading at an eighth grade level and doing fifth grade math, um, then you, you qualify for our veterinary assistant program now. We took the same materials from the other vet veterinary assistant program that is offered at the college. And we did my instructor look, pause instructor looked at all of the materials, all of the objectives, everything that needed to be learned. She completely reformatted it. She reorganized it and, the, and created the classes. So basically in 13 weeks, you're going to get the same training that anyone else get at the college is getting in veterinary assisting again it's it's but it's the way it's being taught they're even they're, um during covid when because that we COVID hit halfway through that program we were putting together kits with test tubes and litmus paper to be able to do urine testing um and um and and several other practical things that they then had to they had to, to record and send to the instructors so they could see that they, they actually could do could do that work. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, I see we've got another question for Michael. What's your question, please? Hi, um, thank you so much for this program. I really appreciate uh, your team. We put this program together. I, um, love, I have a question. Do you have any internship on uh, IT for students that study in Francisco? Can you, I'm sorry that uh, you broke up a little there at the end. Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Uh, do you have any internship for um, students studying IT, uh, especially Cisco? Ah, um, not at that level. Not at that level. If if the student if the if the student is able to grasp and handle something like something like Cisco, yeah. I'm going to I'm typically going to hand them over to. Um, to the other programs in the college. Show me when I finish my meeting. But um, but the, but that's that's an interesting question, because just like and what I'm thinking of is just with just like with um, uh, just like with our other programming, we may want to look into recasting that specifically for special learners. 
Um, but but in particular, um, based on the, the, the if the student is grasping the material at that level, then I'm probably going to send them over to um, to the other to one of the other, either the credit side or to the other continuing education programs that do IT training. In fact, I've got somebody who just completed um, our office skills program who um, at Max is is a whiz when it in fact he wanted to learn um one of the the i think it was with cad one of the design programs mm -hmm. um and, and and that's not something that, that not just something i would touch but can, considering the level of work he he that he can do that i i immediately got him in touch with our it and um, um engineering professors program um, to to see if to get him into to being able to take those type of classes. Um, so how can I get how can I get the information to contact these uh, these people? Um, so probably the best thing to do at this point contact uh, work go through Michael go through Mike Bracknell Bracknell. Um, and Jen, he can relay your question and I can put you in touch with the people. Um, the other thing you can do is you can go to our website. I just put the, um, for now that the contact information that you're, okay. that you're, going, to, that you're going to want for, um, well, for our programming, I just put in, because Michael had, Mike had just said about contacting Jennifer or me. And that's, that, that's Jennifer's phone number, although it's gonna change soon. Um, the other thing you can do is you can go to the CCBC website, and I'm putting that uh -huh. in the chat now too. Um, and you can do a search in particular for Cisco. Uh, you, it should pull up class and IT, and it should pull up classes for you. Um, okay. And there should also be a contact. In, there should be a contact person okay. within that. But if, but if you have but if you are having trouble, um, send it. Send an email to Mike Breck now. And he, he can he can send it to me, and I can I can find out who you need to talk to. And I'll put Thank my you. email address in the in the chat one more time. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Thank you so much. Gotcha. Good. Okay. So okay. So I've talked to, I've talked some about office skills, warehouse warehouse technician, and this is actually this is a big one now too because of um between the Amazon and the other warehouses in the area. Um, and in fact, if you're up in Northeast Baltimore County. Um, you need to, and you're interested in full-time warehouse work. Um, Doors has a joint program with Sephora because Sephora has two large warehouses in the Perryman area, just off of 95 and off of Route 40. Um, and they are, and they specifically have a training, nine-week training designed for people with disabilities to train them to. Um, um, to become full time, and this is full time employment starting at seventeen dollars an hour, and going up from there. Um, so that's definitely. So, but the warehouse technician, they're getting um, they're getting training in OSHA requirements. So in other words, method safety in a way, safety in the warehouse, um, and physical safety, reading and math that you need for the warehouse, um, job readiness and internship. Um, actually, we work with. Um, Restore the, uh, the that organization that that that's where they're doing their internships, doing inventorying of pieces within uh, inventorying and other work in the, the, those warehouses. Um, so I'm going to move on to slide thirteen, which is the locations and schedule. This is something new that I added. I'm going to put it in the chat too, just in case somebody wants to. Okay, yes, um, to look at that. Okay, so our academic skills and humanities classes are are offered right now at Dundalk and Catonsville and then on Zoom. And you'll also see the typical academics, um, the, the schedule, like I said, um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.15 to 4.15. If you, that would be two, three, four, five, that would be six classes, that's a lot. But there, but there's the potential to take any uh, one if, anywhere from one to six classes on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Tuesday, Thursday from nine fifteen to one forty-five done remotely on Zoom. 
our career training programs um, are Monday, Wednesday, Friday at Dundalk for pause and office skills. That would be warehouse if we run it too. Um, and that's going to run about the same time, about 9.15 to 4.15. The child care is we run on Tuesdays and Thursdays from about 9 to 3. Um, a sample daily schedule for Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes. And I figured this would, this would be important for so you can see how the day pans out. Okay, so now I'm on slide 14. So hold on, actually, I need to post that first. Sorry, if that's the, uh, okay. So the Monday, Wednesday, so this is the Monday, Wednesday, Friday class time. So 9.15 to 10.15. Um, all it's all of all four levels of our English literacy. So this is this is everything from basic reading skills up through reading literature and analyzing plot, um, critiquing authors, um, doing critical analysis of character development. Um, and every and but but with four levels there, every and a whole bunch in between. Um, the next, the next hour from 10.30 to 11.30 is our English communications class. Basically, these are writing skills and, and some speech skills. Um, but the idea being, so this is everything from writing strong paragraphs up through writing essays um, and writing essays, short, short stories, poems, um, and poetry, other different types of poetry, um, as well as informational, informational pieces. Um, then there's a, a half hour break for lunch. Then all of our math classes, all three three levels of math classes happen after lunch from 12 to one. And then the next three periods are each an hour through 4.15 are electives. And that's where you can slot, for example, your sustainable art or your video game animation, um, the healthy relationships, building independent skills, living skills, um, you know, music and art those types of classes. Okay. Um, so the next part of this, and again, I'm putting this in, you should, it, I'm now on slide 15, but this, this next section deals with our admission criteria. So we're looking for students over the age of 16. We have had some students who were dual enrolled with, with in high schools, typically our MANSEF or the, the non-public um, schools as opposed to um, the, the local high schools. Um, but we're, so we're looking over the age of 16, um, the ability to manage and complete the coursework. And that's, again, the, the coursework is, we don't give hours and hours of homework. Um, we try to we try to keep the, the vast majority of the learning happening active and learning in the classroom, and then what homework or outside activities are meant to strengthen to strengthen that. But but our students are not having to go home and read sixty pages in a textbook and take notes on it and that sort of thing. They're doing they're doing um, more skills based projects. Um, ability to regulate behavior in a college setting. Our students are under the same code of conduct as any other student within the college. Now, that being said, um, we know that, um, that the, you know, with certain disabilities come certain types of behaviors or tendencies, and we understand that. And I can tell you, for I can tell you, for example, on the Dundalk campus, our public safety people are fantastic working with our students. If there's if there's an issue, they are going to they're going to de-escalate and intervene, and they're going to bring the student to us. And I actually have a, a um, staff person, our coordinator of student support, um, who will work with students on if there's behavioral issues in the classroom or academic issues um, to to be able to assist and support. Um, because we've also found, you know, even before the pandemic. Um, there's, it's a different environment coming to a college campus and it, it's a lot more independent than it is in a, in a, in a high school setting. So it, there's an adjustment period to that. And then we know that there are some other types of, we even saw it with our continuing students that there were um, behavioral things that cropped up after they came back in the classroom after COVID. 
um, that, that we've had to deal with. But again, we understand that and we can work with that. Um, so, but if they're appropriate to and able to negotiate the campus, either with the one-on-one -on -one or by themselves, um, we'd love to have them. Um, our career pro training programs do require reading and math levels, and you'll see what they are there. Typically for most of our, our programs, we're looking at a, a, a sixth grade reading level. Um, and we will do, we will, we will assess that. And, um, uh, as my uh, pause instructors likes to say, um, I can meet with the student and pretty quickly gauge whether or not they're going to be successful in my program. So they may be they, they may be testing at a four, a four and a half to fifth grade reading level. But to me, it's more important that they're job ready. If they're if if they're ready and mature enough to be able to work an internship and go looking for a job, to me that's more important than having high level reading reading skills, as long as they're able to, to, to deal with the, with the material that, um, that they have to, that they have to learn. Um, cause there is some reading and some writing involved with, with, within all of our, within all of our coursework. Um, and for my, uh, many, for most of our, our programs too, the ability to lift 50 pounds, um, especially with, with our childcare and our pause and warehouse technician. Um, a child care worker has to be able to lift a small child, lift or carry a small child. Um, pause, you've got to be able to deal with at least a mid-sized dog. So there are, so there are some, so there are some physical criteria um, or some yeah, yeah, physical criteria that, that we require. Um, our admissions process. I'm going to copy and put this in as well. It's fairly simple. Basically, what we're what we're going to ask you to do is to contact us and set up an intake assessment. Oops, I, I did got a little bit garbled, I think, but um, where are we? Yes. Okay, it, contact our office by phone or email and the contact information is at the end of the PowerPoint. Um, and once you, so basically what's gonna happen is Jennifer or one of our staff are gonna talk, say, hey, okay. Um, so Michael's, what, what exactly is Michael, what types of classes are Michael interested in taking? Um, we'll get a little bit of a background information on you and then we're going to, on the student, and then we're going to send you a couple of an email with a link to fill out some basic in, online information. It's an online questionnaire in Microsoft Forms. You get it to, you're going to give us some more detailed information on the student. We ask that if they have an IEP that you provide that for the last IEP that you provide it for us as well if, as if there's any psych issues um, that, the, that we need that we need to be aware of. Um, and again, this isn't for purposes of screening the, the student out of the program. It's finding out how to best work with the student within the program. Um, you're going to um, schedule an intake assessment. And like I said, that can either this can either be done over Zoom or in person on our Dundalk campus. It's about two hours in length. And it gives, a, it gives one of our staff person people a chance to to meet the student and get it and sort of gauge who they are and what they're all about um, and then there's a short um, a short reading assessment and math assessment that, that we have them do on a computer um, so the, and again it's not it's not to uh, weed people or weed students out from entering the program it's so that we know what level of class to best advise um, the student to take because you don't, if, if somebody's still struggling with whole number division, we're not going to put them in pre-algebra or have them deal with fractions and decimals or pro ratios and probabilities. Um, again, we want to set the student up for success um, with, 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 within the environment. Um, the other thing that I've been pleased with is that we're often from semester to semester moving our students up um, in levels. Um, now, a lot of our students may spend a few semesters in, at English one, for example, or at math one before they're ready to head on. But when they're ready to head on, they, at the end of the semester assessment will, 
you know, that the, we ask the, the instructors to recommend what's next for the student. Um, just like we've at times, assessments don't always tell the whole story. Um, somebody may, may um, in the read in our read theory assessment, a student may um, may come in and say that it's at, they're at a third grade reading level. We would recommend that they be in our English one class. They get into class and the teacher says they're not reading at third grade. They're reading at fifth grade, and so we will turn on a dime. We've had several times within the first week of classes, we have moved students to where they need to be. Because again, student assessments don't always tell the, to tell the, tell the story. Um, and in fact, if we're, if we're seeing something, something that says this doesn't look right, um, my intake coordinator is also a reading specialist and she will give a, she will give a more in-depth QRI assessment. Um, which will which gives uh, which will definite pinpoint um, where the, where the reading level is for the student, or for example, where the math level is. But the idea being that uh, once we know where the student where the student is, we can recommend the classes that they're going to that, that we suggest they take, and then from there it's just a matter of registering for the classes. Now we do require that everybody go through our assessment. Um, which is why you cannot go to the CCBC website and rec register for our classes. Um, but and, and, but again, it's also it, the nice thing about the intake assessment that we do is it really does give our staff a, a chance to meet the student and get a sense of their personality and how they how they think they're going to operate in a classroom too, so that we can we can figure out how to best support them. Um, I see a question from Katie. Coach, um, if your student is on the fence between single step and credit, how is it best to determine their placement? If you think they're ready for credit, start with credit. Okay. So start start with start with the credit admissions process. They, they'll have to take the AccuPlacer and then also the math assessment. That will very quickly tell. Tell uh, tell them where you are, and we often have students being referred back to our program because they're uh, because they're not ready for credit. But it's it's a bit it's 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 just it's going to be more efficient for you to start with the start with if you think the student's ready for credit, start with the credit first, and then come to us if 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 that's not going to be the best fit. It's just easier than going the other way. Uh, yeah, Mike's right. That that is that was a great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, okay. So, okay. Um, to, 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 so that's the admissions process. Basically, that takes that's the, the the presentation. And again, thank you for this has been a, done a little bit differently than we than I typically do it. But again, I wanted to make sure that that this was accommodating all of our students, um, which is so important um, because we do we do have we do have deaf students. We have blind and um, sight impaired students as well, um, as well as those who, who may be, those that may be nonverbal, as well as may have mobility or dexterity issues as well. And, and we can work with you. Um, I see there's another, Michael has an, another, has a question. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, so assessment at this point can only be done either in Dundalk or at, uh, in Kittensville? It, it's either on Zoom or at Dundalk, yes. Okay. At this at this point, yeah, th those are those are the two ways that that we're that we're doing assessments um, at this point. Now, um, for those of you who have students who are getting ready to exit high school, uh -huh. um, I would suggest if you're looking for the fall, start contacting us in the late spring, early summer. But I would say you could April. Um, March, April is not too soon to contact us to set up an intake. If, um, unless, unless you would rather the student um, finish up their classwork, and then you, we 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 do intakes starting in the spring. Actually, we stay, we we take we start intakes for the next semester starting in February through the summer, and then uh, for the fall semester, and then. Um, what then from about mid September through January, we're doing intakes for the spring semester. Um, we also do have, a, it's not on these materials, but for, for current students, 
Um, we also have short two week um, two week semesters. We have one two week semester in January because otherwise um, classes end the second week in December and don't start up until the fourth week in January. So we have a short two week um, online that's Zoom based rather um, some a short semester Monday, Wednesday, mm -hmm. Friday with the math and, with the with the, with the math and English classes and a couple of our electives. Um, again, to be able to 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 work, keep working on and, and support those skills. And then the month of July, we do two two week semesters. So potentially the student students can take four weeks of classes on Zoom, both with the to, to keep up their their English and their math skills. And then we also have a, a couple other smaller, shorter electives. Mainly, mainly lately, it's been stress management and um, stress management types of um, types of classes or life skills classes for those. So we've really built the program that, that once you're in the program, you can basically take do do coursework year round, one way or the other. Like I said, the the our courses, our main courses are offered at Dundalk at Catonsville and then on Zoom. And then all of our career training programs are offered at Dundalk, at least at this point. Um, and then there was that great question about Hunt Valley. I need to look into, actually among other things, I need to look into where our, where all of our students live and start looking at perhaps branching out with programming um, in, and offering things in, in other places. Um, we do, there, the CCBC has one dedicated cooking classroom, and that's at Owings Mills. So from time to time, I will offer that, um, I'll offer a, a, um, a cooking class, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, in, the, in the early afternoon for, um, which would be available for people in the North and people, uh, people on the West. Um, again, I thank you for your time. Um, you should have the PowerPoint. If you have any other questions, please contact us and um, we'd be more than happy to answer questions. Jennifer's been with the program now for 16 years and definitely knows what's going on. I've been with, I've been with, the, pro, with the program as the director for the last four years, but um, actually started out at CCBC in 2010 teaching for this program. So I spent two years teaching, teaching classes and including the, um, the English one writing, um, uh, basic psychology class, uh, big um, commu effective communications class, um, and a couple of other last life skills classes for the program. That was so. That was my entree into CCBC to begin with. So, are there any other questions? Just remember, if you would like a copy um, of the of the recording, um, just reach out to your transition facilitator. If you don't know who that is, um, say just let say so in the chat, and we'll make sure you get to right to the right person. Or anything else, uh, any other questions, the door stuff, reach out to your transition facilitator. It's never too early to start yeah. thinking about the DDA application indoors. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, Deborah. Yes, you had a question. I just have a comment. Okay. Uh, uh, where can I we find more information on this? Um, okay. Well, the you're going to get that you can get the PowerPoint on on the program. Um, okay. So the best thing to do is to yeah. Actually, hold on. I'm going to put. A link I should it's it's a link that I should have in the um, PowerPoint that I do not but I'm going to share it with you um, I'm going to I'm, well, I'm finding this I'm finding the single step page on our website um, and the, I'm going to give you the link to it but if you go to the CCBC website and you look and just do a search for single step you will find you will, you will you will find all the all the basic information that I gave you. This is and this is the link. This is the link directly to our program page. Um, so that's also in the that's also that's also in the chat. 
Um, any other questions? You. You're welcome. I don't have a question, I just have a comment. Okay. Now I just want to thank you all for all what you do for our kids to help them be uh, better tomorrow. Thank you so much. You are welcome, but I think that's really directed towards the transition people with Baltimore County Public Schools that put this together. And I appreciate the opportunity to come and present on and to talk to talk with you about the programming. Like I said, the program that CCBC does really is unique. Um, there isn't, there aren't a lot of programs, especially the career training programs. There's maybe a handful in the entire country and the rest of them I know of, of are out west. Landmark College up in New England is a different beast than what we do. It's it, there, it's it's a much more rigorous type of of of, you know, of college college setting, but um, but the fact that that you know that we're able to offer this type of programming to you. And I'm also proud to say that everyone up through the president and the, of the college and the board of trustees knows about this program and the work we do. I was given the opportunity a year and a half ago to present to the board of trustees um, and got some great questions, but you know, and, but, and the president brags on this program um, and she knows me my name, which is a nice thing, but also kind of scary at times that all the presidents and vice president, the president and all the vice presidents know who I am. But part of it is because we are so proud and the, we are so proud of this program and the fact that it has the support of everybody up to the top, which isn't always the case in colleges, um, unfor unfortunately. But the fact that we are, we are so proud of our students and our, our our credit faculty, um, public safety, the, the pe people in the cafeteria, people in the student success centers, um, are more than happy to work with our to work with our students and support them. And Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you, Michael. It's a good program. Thank you. You are welcome. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. I'm going to stop recording. Okay. Okay. Um, just one, one last offer. Anybody else have questions at this point? You've, 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 you've gotten a lot of information, but you've asked really good questions along the way. I appreciate it. Oh, and Michael, Mike, were you able to take attendance? Um, it, it's supposed, I was told it, it's supposed to send me an email of everybody who logged right. on. Cool. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. I've never, I've never done it in Google meet. I, I know how to do it in Zoom hey, and I know how to do not, it. I'll means. just go back and look at the record. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You should get that email a few minutes after we get off the call yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. I, I used to get them. I used to get them all the time at BLP. So. Okay. Good.